Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Twin Falls, Idaho. I uh, just made my delivery uh, last night, uh, yesterday evening, and uh, it is early morning now. I uh, stayed overnight over there, and uh, man, beautiful, cold morning, boy. Woo, fall has hit, uh, and it's, it's cold. It's 37 degrees, but we're up here in the north, so, you know, woo, a little cold. It hit quick. Uh, but yeah, I am headed to Boise, Idaho right now. I'm empty, not uh, deadheading for a load, but I'm heading over there not only to visit my sister, which is going to be awesome, but I'm heading to my favorite Peterbilt dealership. That is the Boise Peterbilt, uh, uh, Jackson Group Peterbilt. Man, I've, I've mentioned that many times in, in my videos. These guys take care of you. Man, these guys are awesome. Uh, so I'm going in because I've got 120,000 miles on my truck. Uh, so it's due for 120,000 mile maintenance, which is a pretty big checklist of stuff that needs to be done, checked, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple little minor little repairs to take care of, nothing big. And the big thing, yeah, the big thing that's getting done, the governor. Woo, yeah. Oh, man, I've been governed at 65 in this thing since I got it uh, because that's that's Prime's rules. But now I'm with Landstar. They don't have any such rules. So the governor's coming off. Yes. Now, I don't really... It's not actually coming off. Um, I'm requesting it be set to 80. Uh, they're looking into it. I, they think that their, um, their policy may be to set it at 75 max because that's what the tires are rated at, they say. Uh, so we're gonna look into that, and if that's the case, if the tires are truly rated at 75 max, then yeah, I think it'd be a, a good idea to keep the, the governor at 75. That's plenty. Most speed limits are 75 uh, or lower. Uh, there are a few out there that are 80. It'd be nice to run 80, but you know, that's okay. If it's not gonna be uh, safe with the tires like that, I'm all right with that. 75 is gonna be plenty fast for me, but yes, Oh yeah, this is my last run right here, being stuck at 65 miles an hour. Woo, I am excited, baby! Woo, I don't know if you can tell in my voice. Oh yeah, all right. Ah, uh, man. So, I know it's been a minute since I've gotten with you guys. Um, I went to that Stones concert, if you saw that, that uh, little short uh, update. Oh, the Stones were awesome! That was a fluke too, and what you didn't know, because uh, it was only, you can only do 30 seconds on those shorts. My mama was with me, yes, and it was a fluke. So, I ended up uh, getting a load out to St. Louis, and it just so happens that my mom was coming down. She had been in, um, uh, somewhere in Illinois, and was in Springfield, Illinois, and was going to be swinging down to, uh, you know, down 44 to uh, head to Uranus Fudge Factory, one of my favorite places, and uh, heading on down south. And so she was stopping in in St. Louis literally the same day I was, and we were going to be there on Sunday. And we're like, oh, okay, well, there's plenty to do in St. Louis. What are we going to do? And as I'm listening to the radio, uh, Sirius XM Radio, they mentioned that uh, one of the DJs was going to be at the Stones concert right there. And, I, and my first thought was, oh, man, the Stones are in town. It's going to be jam-packed. Everything's going to be busy. Oh, man, places are going to be booked. This is not going to be fantastic. And I'm like, what? Let me see if there are any tickets available for the Stones. So I did some searching. I did some digging. I found some good tickets at a, okay, they were a little pricey. But, uh... But they were the Stones, man, and and with Charlie Watts uh, having just passed, this could potentially maybe be their last go around. Um, you know, they're not getting any younger. Mick is 78 years old. Uh, Charlie, I think, is 77 or 76. Um, you know, so it, it might be, and I didn't want to miss it. I did not want to miss it. Had the opportunity, and so yeah, went had a great time. They sounded fantastic, and after seeing them, I don't know that it will be their last go around. Man, these guys had more energy than my mom and I combined. I mean, they were all over the stage, Mick especially, 
dancing like crazy. I mean, talk about, I mean, he's dancing all over the place. Moves like Jagger, man. Moves like Jagger. Ah, oh, man. And he, uh, running. I mean, he's skipping all over the place. At one point, he was a full sprint across the stage. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, parts where he had his shirt off, looking good. <laughs> I'm telling you, 78 is, is nothing for this guy. Uh, they might be going for it for a while longer. So uh, I hope so. I hope uh, lots of health to them, certainly. Oh, uh, man. Anyway, how's it been going with Landstar? Well, it's, uh, it, it's been, it, it hasn't been too smooth for me, but that's a lot of it being my fault. Um, it, it's been a little rough, a little bit of a rough transition. Um, come on, give me some room, buddy. No, of course not. Freaking you haulers. Let me get some space here. Uh, so, I picked up the trailer in LA and was heading to uh, Salt Lake City. That's the last real update you guys got. And, um, and my goal was to make it out here to Boise, Idaho to get my truck worked on and all that stuff. Well, I'm heading up to Salt Lake and I'm hearing the news that the loads out of Salt Lake are not good. They're great for reefer. You know, if you got a reefer, no problem. But for dry loads, man, they are slim pickings. It's not a good lane for, for dry loads. And so I'm kind of in panic. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to get stuck there. I'm going to have to bobtail out. What am I doing? So I see this load going out to St. Louis, and it was a really good load. I'm like, okay, well, if I get to St. Louis, St. Louis is a major hub. I can get from St. Louis to pretty much anywhere. So I went ahead and took that load. It was definitely way out of route. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And then, of course, uh, the day after I booked that load, uh, there was a load going from Salt Lake to Boise. I'm like, oh, man. I could have gotten it. The loads going out of Salt Lake weren't that bad. Not as bad as I had, had heard. Um, but, you know, they weren't great either. So, all right. So I missed out on that opportunity. But it was a good load. Got me an opportunity to, to build up some revenue before taking some overtime off, you know. Um, so I get out to St. Louis. You know, I'm, I'm heading out to St. Louis. And there's really nothing going from St. Louis to Boise. Uh, or anywhere close. It's just not not a particularly good lane. But there was a lot of stuff going from Iowa out to the Boise area, Twin Falls. So I booked something from Iowa to Twin Falls. It was a good, another really good load. Um, now I just needed to see if I could get something from St. Louis to Iowa without having to deadhead all the way up there. And I did. Found another load going, you know, same day load going from uh, St. Louis to Washington, Missouri up to uh, Iowa. Uh, it's all near the Cedar Rapids area. So it all worked out. Everything worked out fine. It was just rough, you know, dealing with the, all the different agents, trying to figure out the load board, trying to get things scheduled and booked, and agents calling me and calling me and calling me. Hey, we've got this. Hey, we've got this. Hey, we've got this. And they're trying to send me everywhere else except for where I need to go. And I was just getting so tired of it. I'm like, man, these guys just need to shut up. So there's different ways to get loads here at Landstar, and uh, one of them, is, obviously, is the load board. You, 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 you seek out the loads on the load board. You go in and call the agents and, and get the loads booked if these loads are still available. Well, I'll talk about the load board on a different video. You know, definitely need to talk about that. Um, but the uh, another way is through what they call lane match, and that's a whole other video. Um, these are loads that aren't on the load board uh, that I haven't really been able to get into too much yet. Uh, and the other way is based on your availability. Okay, it, it, what at Prime they would call your PTA, projected time of, of availability. You set that, and mine was set for being in St. Louis on that particular date I was making the delivery. And the agents see that, and if they've got a load from St. Louis picking up on that date that you're there, they're going to call you and call you and call you. And I was getting all these phone calls. I was getting so many. And they're calling on the same load. <laughs> you know, there was one particular load. Um, I don't remember where it was heading to, but man, every agent was calling me on this thing. And I was like, no, I don't want that. So I got tired of it. I've set my availability out to Boise for October 8th. 
even though I knew I was going to be, you know, in and out of Boise before then, I, I just pushed it way out. I'm like, I don't want to hear from these guys. I do not want to hear from them. And it worked. I didn't hear from them. Um, I booked my own loads. Everything was good. Getting to Boise, you know, today, Saturday. And, uh, I'm going to spend some time with my sister. going to let them work on the truck. I figured I'll be out by Wednesday the 6th. Wednesday the 6th would be a good day for me to be out. But I'm not going to set my, my availability to the 6th quite yet because I don't want them to bug me while I'm on my time off yet. You know, it's just, you know, and, and things coming out of Boise so far, Boise is not a great area, again, for, for dry van. Uh, the Boise area is great for reefer. You got Cuna over there. You got Boise. You got some other areas. Uh, not too bad. So, that's all right. I was doing good. Wasn't hearing from the agents. Everything was going as planned. And then I get a text yesterday. Hey, I've got a load for you picking up on the 8th. I'm like, well, obviously I'm going to turn this down because, you know, I'm going to be available on the 6th. And I look at the load. It's picking up out of Walla Walla, Washington, which is about a five-hour deadhead. A uh, four and a half, five hour deadhead from uh, Boise. I'm really like, <laughs> and it's heading to New Jersey. So I'm like, really, I'm like, forget this. Come on. I mean, I love those long runs, but five hour deadhead and going finishing up in New Jersey, uh, and and two extra days before I can go pick it up, right? So uh, I I keep looking at it, and then something catches my eye. Ten thousand dollars. I'm like, whoa, that's a big number. <laughs> ten, this load was paying ten thousand dollars. Now that's not ten thousand in my pocket. That's ten thousand uh, line haul. Okay, and I'll get into that more in a minute. But I'm like, okay, well let me look at this. So I look at it. It's six days. Okay, it won't take me a full six days to get there. Um, it won't take me a full six days to get there, but it's based on schedule only, so it's not a not a window. Uh, but that means I'll be able to get a 34-hour reset in on this. And on top of that, so that's not bad. Um, Ten thousand dollars for six days worth of work. I'm like that, that, that's not bad. I, I I can probably swing that, including the deadhead. That I, I don't remember what the per mile was on it, but it was it was. It was, good. it was nice. It was, uh, even my portion after breaking it out was like three, I think it was like 360 something per mile. Um, my portion of it. So the, my portion of it, um, I, I asked them, I said, okay, well there, there's tolls on the way plus fuel and you break out the, uh, the, the fuel surcharge of the tolls. The reason you want to do that at Landstar is because at Landstar we get 65% of the line haul. But we get 100% of the fuel surcharge and 100% of the tolls, 100% of some other accessorials as well. And uh, so what they do is they take that $10,000 and break it out. So they broke out 49 cents per mile for fuel, which that's high. I don't use 49 cents per mile on fuel. Um, and $200 in tolls. Okay. Um, and they kind of rounded up the fuel as well. Uh, so it ended up being 1500, uh, uh, no, 1300 in fuel, uh, 200 in tolls. So the breakdown was $8,500 line haul, okay, of which I get 65% of that. Um, $1,300 in fuel, which I get 100% of that. And $200 in tolls, which I get 100% of that. Toll, actual toll charges are going to be about $128, roughly. Okay, actual fuel is probably going to be about $900, $950, roughly. Breakdown on this, the total math on this, my portion, $7,025. $7,025 coming to me. That's before expenses, that's before fuel, that's before tolls, that's before truck payment, before insurance, before blah, 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 blah. But still, $7,025 for six days worth of work. 
I get an extra two days to spend with my sister uh, and a 34-hour reset. I'm not going to take it in Jersey, um, but I'm going to take it near Jersey so that you know, I'll make I'll do the 34-hour reset, finish one last day, and I'll have nearly a full clock coming out of Jersey. Now, the biggest question was, what time are the deliveries? Are these going to be some overnight crappy hours? Nope. Picking up in Walla Walla at 1300, which means I've got time to, to leave early morning, uh, Friday morning from Boise to make it there. And delivery in uh, Jersey is to be determined during the day. Uh, the current set time is 7 a.m., uh, which is fine. I can make 7 a.m. So that gives me the rest of the day. So it's not even going to be six full days. It's going to be like five and a half days. <laughs> Talk about happy. Man, never could I get a load like that from Prime. Unless I was teaming or training or something like that. You know, again, not bashing Prime. Prime was awesome. Prime got me to where I am today. Couldn't have done it without Prime. Well, I could have done it with other companies. But I don't know. I mean, to get my own truck and to be right where I'm at right now... I still think Prime was the absolute best option. Uh, very happy. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 gonna be a, a, a big payday right there. So here's the downside of uh, of these long loads, and it's a downside, but it's a In plus two. Mile, take exit one forty one uh, on the right to I eighty four business loop. Then take the first left. Why, Agatha? I don't think that's right. Hold on. Gotta check this because I think she's going crazy. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm staying on 84. I guess it's been acting a little weird lately. Anyway, so, alright, so let me talk about the, the pay schedule and how the uh, Landstar does their pay. Landstar does their pay differently than Prime and other companies. With Prime, you know, you got your settlement on Friday, uh, or basically the cutoff was Wednesday. Take exit 141 um, on the right to I-84 no, business loop, no, then take the first left. Not doing it. Stand on 84. Um, so, yeah, cutoff was Wednesday evening, and you got paid on Friday, and it, the, the pay went directly into your bank account, um, as long as it was business. Bank Turn account. Left at the stop sign. Um, it would go right into your bank account. Landstar doesn't do that. They pay you on a Com Data card. You've got to take the extra step and transfer the money from your Com Data card over to uh, your bank account. So that takes an extra day. So because of that, their pay settlements come out on Thursday. So I get my money on Thursday, transfer it to my bank account, and I actually get the money in my bank Friday. So because of that, the cutoff is Tuesday. This load, on yeah, yeah, yeah. this load delivers on Wednesday. So, I just delivered a load. That's going to be on this settlement, but I'm taking time off. So, this is going to be the only load on my settlement for this coming up week. And then I'm going to have the whole, you know, uh, from here through Tuesday, that's it. And then from Tuesday to Tuesday, or Wednesday to Tuesday, keep it up with me here. There will be no additions to my to my settlement because I'm still going to be running that load until Wednesday. So I'm going to have a zero dollar pay settlement, uh, not this next settlement coming up, but the following one. But that's okay as long as you're not living paycheck to paycheck. Which man, if you're in trucking, don't do that. Don't be living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, plan it out because. On Wednesday, which is day number one of settlement week, $7,025 is going to drop right onto that first day. And then I've got the rest of the week to add to that. This is going to be a record-breaking week. Well, it already is a record-breaking week. I've never had a week like that at Prime. You know, not, not I mean, it's been kind of close. I've had a really close week, but never like that. And I'm going to be able to add to that? Oh, man. Yeah, talk about happy. I, I, I'm happy. So it's going to be a freaking fantastic week um, coming up after these, you know, two kind of short, you know, uh, this will be a short week and plus a, uh, a zero week. But again, I'm taking time off. 
what do you expect? Um, I'm taking it, it ends up that I'm going to be taking pretty much a week off because let's see, it's Saturday, I'm off, made my delivery on Friday, and I'm not leaving until next Friday, so just about a week off. So, yeah, ten thousand dollars. I just can't believe that. Woo! So, yep. Uh, anyways, that's it for the update, guys. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Hope everything's going well for you. Uh, start bundling up. It's almost time to, to uh, take those winter clothes out of storage. Oh, man. And uh, if you get a chance to see, to see the Stones on tour, I recommend it. Same with ZZ Top. If you get, that's that's going to be my, my other lookout. If I can uh, get to a ZZ Top concert, uh, I, I want to get to one of those too. Uh, see them again. All right, everybody. I will talk to you guys on the dark side. Take care. Have a good one. Peace out.